you're missing the Garden of the Gods. Huh? Over there. That's Pike's Peak. Ahead of us is Balanced Rock. That Steamboat Rock on the right. Oh, the rocks are all so red. That's how the state gets its name. In this tour to write a thesis for my master's degree, in our state, teachers get for traveling. So you can teach geography better? So we can teach everything better. The more we get around and see the country, the more we know what makes America tick. That man over there hasn't opened his eyes for hours. Shh, he'll think you're trying to. to... Well, I am. Oh, Tess. Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. Did you see the balance rock back there? No, ma'am. I must have dozed off. We well, ought to stay awake. You miss a lot. Such as what, ma'am? Well, they say there are a lot of wild Indians around here. Well, I'll see plenty of wild Indians when we get to Gallup. If the tribal dances are still on. Tribes here from all over the West. Gee. Oh, look! There's another kind of dance. I wonder what kind that is. Could you tell us what dance that is? Butterfly dance, ma'am. They think butterflies are the spirits of their departed ancestors. the two girls that were sitting here. Well, I think I know where they are. I'll get them. Thanks. That's the sun, moon, and star dance. <laughs> Gets them all at once, huh? They're not taking any chances slighting any of them. It's their prayer for abundant crops, long life, and happiness. You gals better get a move on if you don't want to miss your bus. Or our bus. So you're going to Spokane? Yeah. And you're going to Pendleton to be in the rodeo? Yes, ma'am. Roundabout like. I had to see a man back in Gallup. You boys like traveling? Yeah, especially this way. You can see a lot. You can always catch a bus. So I noticed. <laughs> but I thought a cowboy always rode his horse every place he went. They do, ma'am, but my horse is a regular homebody, so I make the long trips by myself. Of course, I send him postcards along the way. <laughs> 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 Minute stop here for lunch, folks. You know, ma'am, I was right pleasantly surprised. What do you mean? 
you actually smiled a few moments ago. On you, it looked good. Thank you. Uh, careful, ma'am. I just know what I'm talking about. He likes you. That's silly. Besides, he's too fresh. Hello. Mind if we share the table? Oh, of course, honey. Two's company, three's a crowd, and four's just right. <laughs> well, move over, me. Thanks. Hey, what are you eating? Raw grapefruit. Tastes good. I've never heard of it before. Well, you ought to come down our way and have some spiced kumquat. Where's that? On the way down from Miami to Key West. There's where you go to sea by bus. It's a fabulous highway shooting right out over the ocean for more than a hundred miles. Like I told Amelia, she's just got to have that in that theme she's riding. Bridges carry you from one tropical island to another. Keys, they call them. I don't know why. Key is the Spanish word for Ireland. Oh. Well, halfway down is Greyhound Key. That's a nice spot to stop off, especially if you like deep sea fishing. The post house there serves the yummiest dishes like baked bonefish and key lime pie. I've eaten in post houses all the way from New England. Riding a bus, you get to sample the special dishes of the country you travel through. Well, I ride a bus because it's more fun. Right now, I'm on an expense-paid tour. On a tour? Where's the rest of your party? Oh, well, that's the way they do it with Greyhound. You can travel alone or in a group and go where you please. You see, the whole trip is planned before you leave. They even make hotel reservations, if you like. Of course, I was practically raised on a bus. You see, I was born in Minnesota. That's where Greyhound started, between two little towns, Alice and Hibbing. Up to then, the fare was a dollar and a half one way. So they started this first bus line and charged 15 cents. Doesn't surprise anyone up there how this bus business has grown. Greyhounds run in every one of the 48 states now. And Canada, too, I'm putting that in my thing. Whatever gave you the idea for this theme you're writing? Well, one of my favorite poems is Henry Van Dyke's. It's home again, home again. America for me. My heart is turning home again, and there I long to be. In the land of youth and free beyond the ocean bars, where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. So, my thesis is titled, America for Me. Well, ma'am, you're sharper than untold. Yeah, give us an educated for instance. Well, for instance, I've written up one of the oldest festivals on Earth, and it's celebrated in this country, the Mardi Gras. It started 5,000 years ago among the Greeks and Romans to welcome spring. When the early Christian church decreed the 40 days of Lent, it was made the period of fun and feasting just before Lent. Since it comes just Ash Wednesday, it was named Fat Tuesday by the French, who brought the celebration to this country. Fat Tuesday in French is Mardi Gras. I don't know when anyone sleeps that whole week. But it's something you'll never forget the rest of your life. And while you're talking about shindigs, don't forget the big rose festival up our way. You mean a Pasadena? No, doggone it. I mean Portland, Oregon, the city of roses. It's right next to Mount Hood. They can put on a rose festival and a ski carnival the same day. You haven't seen America till you've seen the Northwest. And we're sure gonna see part of it on our way to the Canadian Rockies. Say, Tex, haven't you got anything to brag about in your part of the country? Well, now, ma'am, that's the right ornery thing to say to a man from Texas. A state's so big that some of the counties are bigger than some states. Now, you take my hometown, San Antonio. About half our town is as Mexican as Chihuahua. Half 
as is Western as the Chisholm Trail, and just across the street is another half as North American as Chicago. Isn't that three halves? Ma'am, in Texas, everything is big enough to have three halves. And of course, we have the Alamo. You, you know the old saying, remember the Alamo? We remember it with a Santa Santo Fiesta every year. That's pretty. But do you know what I remember most of all about San Antonio? It's that little old twisty river that winds in and out all through the town. And you meet the best looking soldiers. San Antonio's been an army post for several hundred years. Anyway, I met one and we went for a boat ride on the river. It was terribly romantic. Oh, you and your romance. Hey, we better get back to our bus. Well, I guess we won't be seeing you boys tomorrow. And me and I are going to stay over when the bus stops at sunset and take the 8 o'clock in the morning, aren't we? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, what a coincidence. Seat, aren't you? Well, I thought the other young lady'd like to sit with Chuck this morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, it's a big country. Yes, ma'am, it's a powerful big country. It's a little overpowering. I prefer New England. You know, I, I never been to New England. The furthest east I ever got was Michigan. Isn't Michigan a long way from Texas? Don't you try to get a long way from home for your vacation? You know, they call Michigan the water wonderland. Whether you're skimming along in a boat or lazing on the bank or, or fishing for some of their game fish. Yeah, that's my idea of a vacation. It's nice, but I still prefer New England. Well, now, ma'am, if you'd tell me about it, maybe I'd agree with you. Well, up there you have the feeling of being at the birthplace. At the beginnings of America. That's where the pilgrims landed. On that same stern and rock-bound coast. When George Washington established the lighthouse service, the first lights were built in New England. It's a fascinating thing to take a tour of these famous landmarks. So many visitors come up there from all parts of the country. Lighthouses are so friendly and reassuring, and at the same time, so ageless. And along the way, the woods and templed hills, the same that watched the pilgrims gathering for the first Thanksgiving, and Ethan Allen's boys marching to meet the Redcoats. You eat in places that were old before there was a United States, such as Lyman Howe's Red Horse Tavern. Later, it became Longfellow's Wayside Inn. Once, this was the first overnight stop of the stagecoach out of Boston. It was a day's run then. In today's coach, it is only a matter of minutes. Through its hospitable front door, travelers have been entering into its welcome for, for almost 300 years. Ma'am, you're, you're downright poetical. That sounds like right nice country. Oh, I, I didn't mean to get carried away. Hey, looks like Texas finally melting down your friend a little. Uh, I have a lot about...
about New York in my theme. In fact, I could have done a whole paper on it. Just to stand on top the Empire State Building and look down. To me, it's another Grand Canyon. Up our way, teachers take their pupils down to New York every year in charter buses.